Good day, my name is Oliver Müller. I'm head of department of the Clinic of Neurosurgery at the Klinikum Dortmund in Dortmund, Germany. I'm there since one and a half years and I first came in contact with the Orb Eye in May 2019 at the yearly convention of the German Neurosurgical Society. So when I first saw the Orb Eye, I was immediately impressed by the concise design and the intuitive handling of this exceptional exoscope, as well as the maneuverability. So I was lucky to have the first experiences right afterwards in June and July 2019. And we were so convinced by this technology that we bought it and we implemented it into our clinic daily practice in March 2020. And virtually the orb eye has replaced the conventional OPM eye in my daily practice. So what are the fields of action we use the orb eye for? This is in my field of surgery, mainly vascular neurosurgery and neuro-oncological procedures. So what is in the field of vascular neurosurgery the main operations we do? Basically aneurysms, these are as well AVMs, these are dural fistulas and these are cavernomas. In vascular neurosurgery, it is utmost important that you clearly define the target vessel, that you clearly define the pathology, and that when it comes to the use of the intraoperative angiography, the ICG, that we have a superior illumination of the fluorescents and the adjacent cortex. The orb eye carries a tool that I haven't been in contact with so far. This is the narrowband imaging. The narrowband imaging allows to detect apparent vessels, especially in superficial spreading tumors. But we found it most helpfully in resecting cavernomas because we were able to detect small caverns, maybe reminiscent, in the resection cavity of a cavernoma. Talking about neuro-oncologic procedures, I haven't used the conventional OPMI since I have the opportunity to use the orb eye. The magnification of the operation field is superior to any OPM eye. The magnification and the illumination of the operation fields especially applies for tumors in the posterior fossa. We all know that how important it is to have a good illumination of this very small corridor we use to tackle tumors in the cerebellum and the brainstem or in the pineal region. We further know that using the OPM eye, it is mostly uncomfortable to operate in the posterior fossa, especially if you employ the semi-sitting position. This is history with the orb eye. The orb eye allows the surgeon to sit in a very convenient position, having free space to manipulate in the operation field, free to handle his operation tools. The surgical resection goes on like easy and aside it offers great magnification and illumination. So far I have employed the OPOI in more than 50 neuro-oncological procedures. We all know how important it is, especially in glioma surgery, to determine the borders of the tumor from the adjacent probably healthy cortex. The usage of 5 ala fluorescence illumination is gold standard for glioma surgery. Compared to conventional OPMI, using the orb eye I've learned, that is better and superior to determine the borders of the adjacent cortex using the blue 400 fluorescence. Thus, it enhances my operative strategy, not to be forced to switch between normal white illumination and the immunofluorescence at 400 nanometer wavelength. It allows me to continue the tumor resection all within the 400 nanometer wavelength illumination of the operation field. It is not only important to have a superior tool for surgical performance, it is also a topic of education, as we all know. We all know of our assistants who want to learn from our daily practice, who want to be guided through surgery. And using the orb eyes allows an undisturbed communication on the one hand with the scrub staff, on the other hand with our assistants. In this respect, the OPI allows a much easier and better communication with the assistant to guide them through the operation. 
So I can give practical tips and have a good communication without a large operation microscope prohibiting visual contact to the assistant. This topic of space occupying and maneuverability of this tool is of special importance when it comes to implementation of different tools in neurosurgery. The usage of neural navigation today is the gold standard. Resection control is of vital importance for the patient. We use the ultrasound to control the achievements in tumor resection, yet another tool at the operation table. It is very important to surveil the neurophysiological condition of the patient throughout the operation. For this, we need another technical equipment at the operation table. Since the time of Wilder Penfield, we know that the best way to care for the patient's well-being is to have him under continuous neurological examination. This means awake surgery. During awake surgery, it is very important to have unrestricted access to the patient. The Orbi allows this by not prohibiting direct visual contact or speech contact with the patient. Especially during awake surgery, bring all these tools of neural navigation, ultrasound for resection control, the equipment for the neurophysiological surveillance and the neurophysiologist for the neurological examination of the patient during surgery into one room. It is very good to have only a small exoscope that does not occupy much space. Still, being convinced that the OPI offers many advantages compared to a conventional OPMI, there are still things that have to be developed, there are still fields we have to work in it. This means especially integration of navigation into the OPI. This applies also for the development of different fluorescence illuminations at different wavelengths, for example at the 560 nanometer wavelength for metastatic tumor resection. I'm pretty convinced that this new exoscopic operation technology will be of great benefit, not only for the neurosurgical community, but, and what is of utmost importance, for the sake of our patients.